thank you. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, this section, we are going to discuss section 6, which has to do with Pan-Africanism and the anti-colonial movement. This is linked and the continuation of the neocolonialism we discussed the last time. Section 5, we discussed neocolonialism and the effects on the third world, like Africa. And this section 6, we are going to talk about Pan-Africanism and anti-colonial movement, which is the anger that came through the neocolonialist system. African people that have seen the pain of neocolonialism have deemed fit to start thinking how to undo, to break this chain. So that is the beginning of Pan-Africanism and anti-colonialism movement in Africa. The Pan-African movement was emotional, cultural, and psychological and uh, ideological in nature in order for total freedom to be accessible to the black of all over the world, or the black race, no matter how fast they have gone, so far they are blacks. They have the feeling that one time or the other, their fathers and forefathers were enslaved. That's why they see themselves in other countries. Though they are citizens of those lands, but the primary thing, they are Africans. Those ones you say Africans in diaspora, now black Africa, black uh, American, uh, do all of us are together, they were enslaved and died, they were born there. But primarily, they are touched emotionally with what is happening to Africa. So emotionally, they start thinking, how can Africa be liberated? Black all over the world, in every capacity, either it is political, economic, social freedom, they are concerned. In this study, we will trace the historical origin of Pan-Africanist movement in Africa as a form of anti-colonial struggle in the continent. Pan-Africanists define the concept of Pan-Africanism. They, they see it as essentially that set of political ideas a certain Africa as a single entity which must unite to liberate the black race from the colonial holes. It might be emotionally, economically, politically, socially, because these things are being dictated. They are dictated by the white. Wherever they are, they dictate our, econo our economic measures, our political system, our social rights are decided. So, these Pan-Africanists have decided that, look, we must break away from this system. However they do it, they had some systems and some ideas put together for the breakaway. All African countries are similar and bought the same yoke of colonialism. Nobody is exempted. So that's why both the Africans in diaspora, Africans in the students of Africa origin and went to read outside, and the ones internal. When they think about the historical processes the black men have gone through, they decided to liberate the black from the whole system of colonialism, neocolonialism, and total slavery. Well, look at the historical perspective. The movement was first initiated by people of Africa descent in diaspora. The movement later enkindled the political zeal and anti-colonial vision of imagined or imagined Africa educated elite. The elites that, that were educated outside, they have the right to exercise their right because in the Western world they have the right. Then they have, they have to carry, out, carry all those ideas to the ones that are in Africa. Say, look at what we have learned. Look at what we are going through. How do we help our fatherland? And the nationalist leaders from within the continent pick up all these challenges, start thinking, start molding ideas of liberation. The Pan-Africanism in this perspective views Africa 
as a single geopolitical entity that must unite to constitute a continental anti-colonial force. The founder of Pan-African movement identified colonialism and imperialism as the major factors behind the aggressive and humiliating as well as oppressive and dehumanizing policies of alien rulers in Africa. When you look at the leaders, they look at our world, our continent, as the people that have been humiliated. So those are the things that ring in their heart that they decided to go into this Pan-Africanism to liberate Africa as a whole. Anti-colonial feelings and movement began outside African continent in such world. Capital city as London, Lisbon, Paris in France, and Manchester in UK. Because these were the centers of colonialist, imperialist adventures in Africa. Having developed political and social economic uh, consciousness up to a revolutionary at uh, one level. One revolutionary one level. When you get to one level, you try to think about what to do next. So blacks in the diaspora began deliberation on how to combat or challenge British imperialism and colonial in, colonialism in Africa at the dawn of 1900. Let's look at the core African colonialists. In both French and British colonies, they have the same approach. Their approach is towards the anti-colonial movement. This became closely related to the form of colonialism which were introduced and established by the French and British imperialists or colonialists. Pan-Africanism produced three forms of anti-colonialist movement in broad terms. One, armed liberation struggle embarked upon by those subjected to settlers' colonialism. Two, the form that took place in the French colonial territories. We saw these colonies basically as departments of the metropolitan France. In France today, some of the African nations that they have proved, they, uh, they said they have given dependence, are still paying taxes to France to survive whatever system they are operating. Countries like Benin Republic, countries like Côte d'Ivoire, countries like Senegal, they give you assimilation that we are one. But you must pay tithes. They decide what to pay. They decide what to do in your own country. So those are the forms of colonialism that have ignited the palm Africanism to pick up. The third one, the British colony particularly, those ones, that went through British colony policies of indirect rule system, like Nigeria, are not exempted. The Queen's eye, the, the royal eye, the Prime Minister of Britain, their eyes are just here. We, we, whatever we do, they give us sign that we are watching. If we are independent, should they be watching what we do? That's a million dollar question. So look at the two pan-Africanist resolution. They meant all the pan Africanists, they decided they have to carry on this kind of system. They resolve in their heart that, look, this is how we are going to do it. Is that either it work, it doesn't work, but let's have a way forward. Two of the ideas of Marco Gave and Dr. Du Bois continue to serve as the basis for the evolution or emergence and development of organized anti-colonial movement in the African continent. The first one is, the two ideas, they decided to justify what they want to do based on the environment they dwell. The two ideas was the provision of justification for the use of arms to overthrow colonial rule in Africa. They want to use arm to do it by force. But look at the implication. You can't find somebody that is stronger by, than you that produces the arm. They are rightly going to subdue you. So the brutality 
that accomplish settler colonialism, in particular, and dehumanization that characterized colonialism in general, were among other things used as a basis for radical struggle to overtake colonial rule. The second resolution was, was that the expectation of emergence of United States of Africa after the liberation of the entire continent from the yoke of colonialism. Since you have said, according to the white, the Western world, so you are given Africa independence. Okay, let them have a United States where Africa will be one nation and control their resources and be stronger. You know, this believe that when the broom is together, you can't break it. But they will never allow Africa to be a United States of Africa because it will be very hard for them to penetrate. Because how to, then there used to be radical leaders like Muammar Gaddafi of Libya who stood on that United States of Africa to the last day. And you look at the downfall of Muammar Gaddafi was the handiwork of the Western colonialists. They couldn't bend him. They, want, they have to lobby the local bourgeoisie to rebel against their good leader and destroy the leader. Now they have destroyed Gaddafi. Where is Libya today? Those are the things that the local bourgeoisie fail to understand. So the first was the liberation non-violent gradual approach to anti-colonial struggle. And the second one was the violent armed struggle within the context of socialist Marxist strategy. The 1945 March and October Pan-African Congress endorsed the socialist Marxist approach, thereby moving Pan-Africanism not only away out of its infancy, but also from its hitato pretty bourgeois political performance stage, so that when you grow from strength to strength, you understand the process of growth and know how to tackle your problems. Then look at the imperialism and their victims. How does this imperialist treat their victims? And what is the gain the Africans are victims are getting from this imperialist? So the victim of imperialism are those people and territories who pass through colonial experiences as well as those who suffer from neocolonialism today. We mentioned the people that never passed through colonialism, but they are held on to neocolonialism because they are helpless and can't help themselves. Because of the activities of the local bourgeoisie in their own nation. So in conclusion, therefore, the activities of imperialism in Africa precipitated liberation nationalist movement and armed struggle in Africa. How? Because if these things are not followed the way we are supposed to handle it, it could be total destruction for Africa. But if the activities of imperialism in Africa that supposed to, we're supposed to be liberated, the nationalist movement is doing their best, the armed struggle we are using, like Jonas Savembi, if you go to Southern Africa, some people that have used force, the guerrilla warfare, to fight the colonial masters, never succeeded. South Africa used the population to fight them, anti-apartheid with the strong and support of other African nations. That's why South Africa succeeded today. Therefore, in Africa, the action park stage of this colonial system and your colonial activity in, in the, in the in the uh, continent can only make us stronger when we fight in Africa as one and this action will lead to power packed or full pack stage of total liberation because the liberty we are trying to get today is not what we call by negotiation and when you negotiate with them they, they were operating on equal exchange imbalance system so for us to get to the end of the tunnel and see brightness 
that should be action-packed stage that will lead us to total liberty. Thank you. <laughs>